Hi everyone, Mr. Mark McHugh. In today's video, I'm going to go through a problem that we can use linear programming to solve. It is a long video and I'm only going through one problem, uh, but the reason it's so long is because I'm going through uh, all the methods that we'll need to solve this problem, um, doing things by hand and showing you how to do it on a graphics calculator as well. So if you want to use um, the time tags in the description of this video, go ahead and, and click ahead um, if you want to skip over parts. But um, I'll be going through the whole process, every method that we've learned so far to solve this problem. Now this problem comes from a MASA revision guide, um, <clears throat> but rather than answer the questions associated directly with this problem, or uh, well, this question, I'm actually going to be using the six steps from the Hazy textbook. I think this is a good process, or these six steps are a good process to, to follow when problem solving uh, linear programming um, type problems. So um, let's look at the, uh, the information we have here. A book publisher intends to send a package of textbooks to an interstate book fair. He publishes two textbooks, one for mathematics and one for physics. Each mathematics book weighs one kilogram and each physics book weighs 800 grams. The total weight of the package cannot exceed 40 kilograms. He already has pre-fair orders or pre-orders for 12 math books and 10 physics books. So we need to send at least 12 math books and at least 10 physics books. And he estimates he will not sell more than 24 math books or more than 30 physics books. So we're not going to send any more than 24 math or 30 physics books. The other bit of information that is important um, that's not included in the opening couple of sentences there is each math book is... I'm going to earn a $24 profit and each physics book is going to earn a profit of $18 and the idea is maximizing profit okay so with all that information a lot of information um, we are going to start by looking at step one um, and it says to explain or define in sentence form the two variables being considered so in this case this um, problem there are two products that uh, are being sold or that are competing for a resource those two products are the math books and the physics books so I'm going to say let x represent so let x represent the number of math books and let y represent the number of physics books okay so that is step one done i've got variables um, for each of the products in this problem the math and the physics books that are competing for the resource um, in particular the weight that can be sent across we'll get to that in a minute Prepare a table to display the given information. Now, look, you don't have to do a table. Um, it's, it's up to you how you sort of um, put that um, information down. Um, but I like it because it sort of displays it and it's easier to read when I'm trying to construct my constraints. In my first column, I, I leave that column for the, the products, okay? In this, in this case, it's the type of book. You can, if you want, write product, but type of book is the two products or... Sometimes it's people. In this case, we've got math books and physics books. In the second column, I leave that for um, the variable that we're associating for the, to represent the number of each of those products. So number of books is represented by X and Y for physics um, and X for maths. The third column is going to be the um, the resource that they're competing for. So in this case, it's the weight. And the weight for each math book was one kilogram. And the weight for each physics book was 0 0.8 kilograms or 800 grams. I'm converting it all to kilograms. The total weight available to send across um, was 40 kilograms. So no more than 40 kilograms. The other thing I'm going to include in this table here is the information about the profits for each of those products. So remember the math book had a profit of $24 and the physics book had a profit of $18. So include that in the, um, the table. 
Now we can construct our constraints and also our objective function from this table. Okay, the next step is to write the objective function in algebraic form, so an algebraic expression, and state whether you are trying to maximize or minimize it. In this case, it's about maximizing his profit. Okay, so I need to write an expression um, for the profit he would earn for selling X amount of math books and Y amount of physics books. And that is going to be my objective function. Okay, that's the problem that we're trying to solve. How do we maximize the profit here? Um, so, objective function. is in terms of x and y 24x so the profit of $24 for every maths book they sell plus 18y $18 for every physics book they try to sell and we are trying to here like we said maximize the objective function maximize the profit there'll be some problems where you're trying to minimize something minimize the amount of time perhaps spent um, doing two tasks, for example, okay? Or minimize the amount of money um, you're spending, okay? So minimize cost. In this case, we're maximizing profit. Anyway, that's the objective function done. Now, step four says to state the constraints, excuse me, in algebraic form. So here we're going to write our inequalities for the simplex or the feasible region based on predominantly this main constraint. So the weight of each math book and the weight of each physics book um, added together needs to be less than 40 kilograms um, that we can send across. So my first constraint or inequality will be 1x plus 0.8y is less than or equal to 40. Okay. Remember if we have one as a coefficient in algebra we actually don't need to include the one so it's just x x plus 0.8y is less than or equal to 40. the other constraints that we do have here is that we did say he has pre-orders already so he needs to set he needs to send at least at least so greater than or equal to 12 math books and at least 10 physics books so greater than or equal to 10. He also doesn't want to send any more than 24 math books. So X is going to be less than or equal to 24. And no more than 30 physics books. So Y is going to be less than or equal to 30 in this case. So those are our, our five basically constraints um, or inequalities. Um, for the sake of this video, I know we can combine these two inequalities to one, but I'm going to separate them just so that I can show you how to draw those boundary lines for each of those constraints on this graph here, which is actually step five. Draw the graph of the simplex or the feasible region given by the constraints. So we know that the boundary point of all of these constraints is basically just the equation form of each of these inequalities. So for example, x is greater than or equal to 12. The boundary of that inequality would be x is equal to 12. So I can go ahead and graph that on my um, set of axes here I've got. On the x-axis, I'm looking at 12, which is here. And get my ruler out and draw a line through the points where x is equal to 12. Okay. Then I also have, so x is equal to 12 is that line there. I also have um, x is equal to 24 as a boundary point. So again, let you mark out 24, get your ruler, and draw a line through that point there as well. I also have y is equal to 10 as a boundary point, and y is equal to 30 as a boundary point. Good habit to get into as well is to label those lines that you're drawing so get your ruler out again draw those next two lines for those constraints for the physics books again label those so y is equal to 30 y is equal to 10 sorry i think that y up here that should be x obviously x is equal to 24 
Um, and the final constraint that I'm going to graph is x plus 0.8y is less than or equal to 40, or in equation form, x plus 0.8y is equal to 40. So x plus 0.8y is equal to 40 will be a boundary line for this constraint. Now, I need to find two points at least that will pass through this line um, to help me graph it. So I'm going to find the two intercepts, the x-intercept, and the y-intercept, starting with the x-intercept, I'm going to substitute in the value of y is equal to 0. So substitute that into the equation here. So it becomes x plus 0 0.8 times by 0 is equal to 40. Now, anything times by 0, as we know, is 0. So I'm just left with x is equal to 40, which is my x-intercept, which is here on my graph. And for my y-intercept, I'm going to do a similar, similar process, but this time I'm substituting in, obviously, x is equal to 0. So it becomes 0 plus 0.8y is equal to 40. I'm then just left with 0.8y is equal to 40. To solve for y here, all I need to do is divide by 0.8 on both sides. So divide by 0.8 divided by 0 0.8. I'm then left with y is equal to 40 divided by 0 0.8. 40 divided by 0 0.8, if you use your calculator, you'll get 50. So my y-intercept is on the y-axis value 50. Okay, so they're my two points. Then I get my ruler out and draw a line through those points. And they are the boundary points of my um, simplex or feasible region. Now, I know that he needs to sell more than 12, x needs to be greater than 12 math books, less than um, 24. So it needs to be in between those two lines, the feasible region, the simplex. We need to sell more than 10 or send more than 10 physics books, but less than 30. So it needs to be in between those two lines, simplex. And we're looking at less than um, x plus 0.8y um, is equal to 40. So the equation of that line, x plus 0.8y is equal to 40. So I believe my simplex or my feasible region is here in between those four blue lines and underneath that black line. Again, you can choose a test point. A test point um, basically just work um, helps you work out how I shaded in the correct region for my simplex. So what I do is I try and find a perfect pair coordinate. So for example, 20, 20, that's what I mean by perfect pair. X and Y values are the same, if you can. And then we're just going to substitute X is equal to 20, Y is equal to 20 into each of those five inequalities, and they must satisfy all of them. So for example, if I'm just looking at the X value of 20, 20 needs to be X needs to be greater than or equal to 12. Well, 20 is greater than 12, so this is correct. If x was 20, 20 is less than 24. So, so far we're correct. If we're looking at the y value 20 also, is 20 greater than 10? Yes, correct. Is 20 less than 30? Yes, correct. Does 20, 20 satisfy this inequality? Well, let's put it into a calculator and find out. Does 20 plus 0 0.8 times by 20 uh, equal, or is it less than 40? It's 36, which means yes, um, that test point satisfies all of those inequalities, meaning I have correctly shaded in um, the right feasible region or the right simplex, okay? So that's step five done. Step six is to find the optimal solution and when it occurs. Um, remember, I'm going to use a graphics calculator to help me here, but essentially we are looking at the vertex points of this simplex. This simplex has five vertices, all right? Here, 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 and here. We are going to find the coordinates of those five vertices and test them against our objective function 
to see at which point we actually make the most profit. Remember, each point represents a possible combination of math and physics books that we could send to the interstate fair. First of all, looking at this um, vertex, I actually don't need to use technology to, to work out the, the vertex coordinates here because on this line, x is equal to 12, and along this line, y is equal to 10. So the coordinates of that vertex are 12, 10, which means at that point, I would sell 12 math books and 10 physics books. The vertex of this, uh, so the coordinates of this vertex would be, again, 12, this time 30. So y is equal to 30 along that line. So the coordinates are 12, 30. So that's another possible solution to our problem. Um, on this um, vertex here, it's a little bit harder. I'm going to use technology to solve that one in a minute. I'll show you how to do that. But I do know that the y value will be 30. So not sure what the x value is yet. The y value is going to be 30. Um, at this vertex, our coordinates will be, again, um, a y value 10 and x value 24, because it's where x equals 24 and y equals 10 cross. So my coordinates are 24 for 24 math books and 10 for 10 physics books. On this vertex here, I know that my x coordinate at least will be 24, and then I'm going to solve for y using my graphics calculator. So 24 and work out those remaining two values there before we go ahead and test all five of those vertices against the objective function. So on your graphics calculator, this is how you would draw a simplex or feasible region based on these five constraints. So first of all, head into your stats function and sorry, not your stats function, your graph function. Um, and we're going to put in it. In fact, I'm going to put in these inequalities. You can put in the boundary lines as equations, but I'm going to put in the inequalities and show you how to do a simplex on your graphics calculator. So first of all, um, I'm going to put in x is greater than or equal to 12. So I'm going to change the graph function type from y equals to x is greater than or equal to, in this case, 12. Um, I'm going to change the type again from x is greater than or equal to to x is less than or equal to. In this case, x is less than or equal to 24. Then I'm going to go and change the function to y is greater than or equal to. In this case, y needs to be greater than or equal to 10. The minimum amount of physics books we're going to send across. And then I'm going to change it again to y is less than or equal to 30. So type y is less than or equal to, in this case, 30. And the final function I'm going to put in is x plus 0.8y is less than or equal to 40. Now, before we do this, we need to have it in um, the form where y is the subject. So I guess changing it from standard form into slope intercept form or where y is the subject, y is by itself on the left-hand side of this equation. So I need to get rid of this x and this coefficient of 0 0.8. I'll show you how to rearrange this equation um, now before I put that, pop that in. So x plus 0.8y is less than or equal to 40. In this case, rearranging this inequality is going to be the same process we use for rearranging an equation, okay? First of all, I'm going to remove the x from the left-hand side by subtracting x from both sides. I'm then left with 0.8y is less than or equal to 40 take x. I'm then going to divide both sides by 0.8 to remove the coefficient of 0.8 from y. I'm then left with what I want. y on the left-hand side as a subject is less than or equal to 40 take x all over 0.8 and I'm just going to pop that in as it is into the graphics calculator so uh, as we said y is less than or equal to 40 take x 
all over 0 0.8. Hit execute, and I'm going to draw it. Now you can see it's drawing those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 inequalities. Um, I'm going to fix this so that the simplex, excuse me, the simplex is the only part of this um, graph that's actually shaded. So to do that, you can go into the graph setup. So shift setup and change the inequality type from union to intersect. Okay, then when we draw that, it'll only show where all of those inequalities um, meet, which is the same feasible region that we've already tested. Okay, so that looks very similar to what we did over here. Now what we need to do is we need to find some values. We want to find, like we said before, where those final two vertices are located in terms of their coordinates. So I'm going to show you two ways of doing that. First of all, using the G-Solve F5, I'm going to find a point of intersect for this vertex. So just um, you can see that that line there is the one that's flashing. I want to make sure I've got the two lines flashing that cross to form that vertex there. So you just need to toggle through until you see one of them. So now that's one of the ones I want. So hit execute. Now I'll toggle through again so that you can see, because at the moment these are the, this is the vertex that we're going to be given. I don't want that. That's not on the boundary or the vertex of the um, simplex. So toggle through until you see the two that we want. There they are flashing green. That's the spot I want. So I'm going to hit execute and it will give me the coordinates. X is equal to 16, Y is equal to 30. So the missing value I have here should be 16. The next uh, method I'm going to show you to solve for this um, set of coordinates or this vertex is going to be G solve. Uh, but I've struggled trying to find a way you, when I've got an X equals line or a, um, an inequality is just X is the subject using the intersect function. So I'm going to scroll across and actually use the Y calculate because I want to calculate the Y value when X is equal to 24 along this line. Okay, so y cal f1 again choose the correct line i want that black line at the moment um, the diagonal one which represents x plus 0 0.8 y equals 40 so toggle through that's the one i want hit execute and now the x value i'm going to input is 24. so along that line when x is equal to 24 y is equal to 20. so the coordinates of that vertex are 24 and 20. Okay, now I have all five coordinates for my vertices. I'm now going to test each one of those against my objective function. Remember, each of those um, vertices represent the number of math books, the X value in that set of coordinates, and the number of physics books, the Y value in that set of coordinates, that is a possible solution to our problem. And the reason I'm only using these five um, points, no, no points within the simplex, is that the optimal solution always occurs at the vertices of our simplex. Okay, so we're only going to test those five points. So, what we're going to do is we're going to list those vertices in terms of their coordinates. So, 12 and 10, um, again, 12 math books, 10 physics books, 12 and 30. 16 and 30, 24 and 20, and 24 and 10. Now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute those values, as I said, into our objective function, which was 24x, representing the profit for each of the math books we sold, plus 18y representing the profit of $18 for every physics book that we sell. So those coordinates x and y are going to be substituted into this uh, expression for x and y. So you can get a calculator out um, and basically just write this expression, but instead of x to start with, we'll be using 12, and instead of y to start with, we'll be using 10. So, 
24 um, times by 12 plus 18 times by 10. And if we sold 12 math books and 10 physics books, it would give us a profit of 600, sorry, 468 dollars. If we sold 12 math books and 30 physics books, I would change those values. Um, in this case, I just need to change that 10 to a 30. It would give us a profit of $828. If we sold 16 math books and 30 physics books, in this case, I'm just changing this number to 16, we would get a profit of $924. If we sold 24 math books and 20 physics books, we would have a profit of $936. And finally, if we sold 24 math books and 10 physics books, the profit would be $756. Okay, so we can see that the, to maximize profit, the optimal solution is going to be selling 16 math books and 30 physics books, which would give us, no, it wouldn't, it would be 24 um, math books and 20 physics books, which would give us $936 because that is the uh, highest value that we have in terms of profit when we substitute um, all of those vertices points into the objective function. So, in answer to the whole problem, my final solution is, okay, um, and part of step six is actually saying here to give your answer in sentence form, to maximize profit, um, he should sell or send 24 math books and 20 physics books interstate to um, to get a possible profit of $936. Now, I said possible profit there because that, I guess uh, what we just did there, we're assuming that he's going to sell all 24 math books and all 20 physics books. He may not sell them all, uh, but that is a possible profit um, and the best possible profit if um, he, he did sell all of those books that he sends over. So that's it. I It's a lot to take in, but it is um, yeah, one way to by hand uh, and checking using a graphics calculator how to solve uh, that um, problem using linear programming. Okay, thanks for watching again, guys, and I'll see you next time.